Okay, good afternoon. I don't think I need to, to add anything to the introduction made by, uh, by Anish. Uh, just one thing, I also have a life outside of work. So I'm um, originally from France. Uh, um, I'm married, I have four children, plus a dog because I've worked for the pet food division of Nestle, so I had to, uh, I have to support my former colleagues. Uh. Uh, what I want to show you, uh, and I think uh, we have more or less 30 minutes, so I need to make it quite short to keep a bit, uh, bit of time for the question, is more all the journey we have made in Nestle in demand planning process. Uh, not only from a, from a tool perspective, but a bit everything. Where we are today, what are the challenges that we face? Uh, and I've seen some this morning which are very common. Uh, a lot of the things I have seen this morning in the various, various presentations are, are really uh, things we face today. And what are, what are a bit the next steps? I don't want to make to give you a very academic thing. On, you need to do this or this or this. It's just, you know, these are a bit of f several factors that you need to have in mind. Yeah? Just a bit of history of Nestle. Yeah? Uh, you all know probably the chocolate, whatever. In fact, this company started with one guy who was a German pharmacist, yeah? and who did experiment some uh, milk powder for babies that were dying of the way when their mother could not breastfeed. Uh, so you see it started all as an experimentation, but as you can see today, after 150 years, the experimentation really became big. Uh, and that's what I want also to show you with uh, what we've done in, uh, in demand planning. Uh. If you look in 150 years, uh, and that's a very important factor for the complexity of the demand planning. So you see, since 1866, many acquisitions. Uh, uh, some categories which are very specific, you see the water there very seasonal. Huh? In the water business, you sell probably 75 to 80% of your yearly sales within uh, May to September, huh? and even sometimes May to August. So very, very high complexity in terms of demand planning. Also, you see here some, I would say, the border with Pharma. Uh, Galderma is a, a company that produces uh, dermatologic creams, whatever, uh, that used to be a joint venture with L'Oreal, which Nestle took over back in 2014. Huh? So you see, I mean, Novartis is more or less the same, uh, and lately a few investments that were made in coffee. So you see, there is a really big diversity in the portfolio we have to manage. Yeah. Second point, uh, in terms of the influential in the demand planning, is that the, the size of it. Uh, this is just 2016 uh, figures. Uh, you see that, in fact, with close to it's 90 billion, uh, you can keep in mind, 90 billion uh, USD as, a, as net net sales, that's making us the biggest company in the, in the food industry. Uh, so that's really a big challenge also, because, you know, a slight error in what you plan may have some big consequences at the end. Uh, so that's really something very difficult. We have about 450 factories across the world. Uh, so that's also giving you the size. Because I'm in charge of demand and supply planning. So the demand is just in one part. I also need to make sure that the, all which we do in demand planning is passed onto the production uh, engines. And one thing, I'm, te I'm telling you about the, the, the complexity uh, to pass in demand planning. If we connect this to the raw material that we buy, you see the weight we have when we buy coffee or when we buy chocolate may have a big impact not only on the farmers, but also on the, I would say, overall trading of these uh, commodities. Uh, if we are too, too optimistic by 10% in coffee, you see, it's 1% of the world production that can be at stake. Uh, and that's really something we need to really take care. Uh, the impact down can be, can be really huge. Third point uh, about the complexity is about the, the, the geography. Uh, we are everywhere. Uh, you have more or less the figures, which is, uh, and these are the net net sales uh, for each of the three zones uh, which are managing. So you see, obviously, that uh, America is the biggest one. Uh, mostly because of the US. The uh, US out is, of these 40 billion is probably nearly half of it. Uh, so that's really huge. Uh, the rest is Europe and North of Africa and Asia here. And we have here, I told you we have 450 factories, but a lot of cross-border supply. So which means from the moment you make your demand until the moment you have product in stock, there can be some quite long lead times. So if your demand is variating too much, you may end up in, in big messes uh, and be obliged to use air freight to transport things which you should never do uh, because air freight is very expensive. Uh. So uh, if, you, if I summarize, I mean, the, the, the big challenge uh, within the demand, first the geography. Uh, we even have a small operation in North Korea, by the way, uh, just for people who misbehave a little. Just <laughs> 
Uh, so geography, the size, and the various categories. Uh, and that's really the three main things which are making it very difficult. Uh. If we look now a bit more uh, uh, in detail how we do demand planning today, the, the journey we've made, uh, we, like many of you, started you know, with uh, very basic data. Uh, when I started in the pet food division back in 95, 6, uh, to do your demand planning, the only data you had were the sale of Nestlé to all your clients. Huh? And I remember when I wanted sales even by client to get the Tesco in the UK or the Carrefour in France, I had to go to the IT department and ask for that, that, that huh? you know, very difficult. So really basic. Huh? Today, I would say huh, we, we are somewhere around there. Huh? And that's a bit what I'm going to show you. Huh? The external data have come around. But the main point huh, is that we need to be close to what's happening there. Uh, this is where, I mean, I saw this morning well, from Eric Wilson a presentation, a photo of Charlie Chase, uh, with somebody from SAS that I've met uh, quite often. Charlie is, is calling this a true demand. Is what's happening in the shops. Uh, and now you have physical shops, but you also have online, which is making it even a bit more difficult, uh, because we have different channels to capture the, the information that we need. Uh. And the ultimate goal is to really get something that's much more perspective. Uh where we don't need so many human intervention, and we could get some analytics that's really telling us what's, what we need to do. Huh? But we're not yet there, even if uh, we're moving. So if we look uh, uh, with the geographies, what we've done, in fact, all our demand planning process now is covered with some predictive analytics. Uh, you see, OK, we still have a few, uh, a few countries. Uh, North Korea is not in yet. Huh? Nobody wants to go there for, uh, from SAS. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need because it's a bit like Venezuela. Everything is just uh, flat. <laughs> now, you see, we have a few, a few countries uh, still in Africa. Uh, South Africa should be now, in fact, uh, dark blue like all the others, as well as uh, Maghreb is now starting. It's more here we're a bit late because we are not organized on a, let's say, decentralized way, country by country, but we have big regions. So when you take this, you know, so-called, this one is called Equatorial African region, you have 23 countries, so it's a bit more difficult than when you have, you know, just South Africa here. Huh? So you see, we have, I mean, 46 markets, we have about 300 users, huh? which are, you know, quite, I would say, familiar now with analytics. Huh? And here, it's an internal KPI that we have, which is, we call it the adoption rate. How many SKUs in our portfolio are we using directly the statistical forecast? Uh, and we are about 50%. So it means that we've reached, uh, we have saved by this. It's very difficult uh, to, 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 I would say, figure out the, the, the amount of money. That's what my boss is always asking me, but you know, it's just a bit difficult. But we saved a lot of efficiency in the demand planning teams because we can say that we have nearly 50% of our SKUs for which we just take directly a statistical forecast. Uh, now the challenge is the remaining 50%. One example, uh, because we, we, we need to sell much better this uh, analytics impact. Uh, and you, we, we can really show, and that's a very recent one, uh, Dolce Gusto, probably all of you know, because it's existing nearly everywhere in Europe, uh, but it was launched recently in Brazil, uh, I think uh, 18 months ago. So they started directly, uh, after a while, sorry, they started with, with analytics. What you see is that, okay, the adoption, okay, they, they are a bit above. Uh, between 2016 and 2017. So the demand plan accuracy one month ahead jumped above 80%, uh, which was really a big step compared to what they were doing at the beginning. Then this one is uh, the case level, the, case, the service level, in fact, what you give to clients. Uh, so here, you know, 98 to 99 is very important. It doesn't look very big, but I can tell you with some clients, uh, like the, the Carrefour from France, which is quite strong in Brazil, when you get 0.01%, it's good. Uh, so that's really something what, uh, which, which was a big achievement. Freshness is our, it's also an internal KPI, is the remaining shelf life of the product when it's delivered to the client. Uh, because you know we have, our food is getting, you know, I wouldn't say worse than worse, but we need to sell it before it's reaching close to the best before date. So the longer remaining shelf life you have at, at the client, the better it is. Uh, this went to 84% of the total. Uh, and at the end of the day, and that's something that's talking a lot uh, with finance people, we, we, we decrease the stock very quickly. Uh, so you see, and here, and that was one of the challenges, with that sort of example, we can really connect 
what we do in analytics with some business benefits that can be, you know, very tangible. It's money. Huh? You know, stock cover, you can uh, figure out in number of pallets that we didn't need to, to pay storage for, in the working capital that's a mobile. You have a lot of things that you can sell afterwards. Huh? Because this part that we're all talking a lot about analytics, about demand planning improving, I mean, not even at senior level, not everybody is convinced of this. Huh? So that's really important to make uh, this connection with, with business. So that's a bit where we are, <coughs> and there were, I would say, three, uh, the three big things, and I'm, I'm, it's quite similar to what Eric Wilson presented this morning, uh, the, the three pillars to which, thanks to which we could do it. The first.